Hello everyone and welcome to Winden. For the next few weeks we'll be taking a break from Berlin Noir to be working on this new mini-series here on the channel and I'm very excited to be uh, getting started with this series. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for almost about I'd say about six months. In fact this was almost the series I did uh, instead of Pripyat, which was the last miniseries at the end of last year, I almost decided to do this one, but for whatever reason, I decided to do the Pripyat series first and push this one back. And I'm very glad that I did because there's a few things uh, that I wouldn't have been able to do in this series if I had wait or if I had done this uh, earlier, all the way back into last year. So waiting has given me the opportunity to do a few more things, which will make this series just a little bit better. But so as quite a few of you have pointed out and noticed in some of my screenshots on Instagram, but also the teaser video that I posted uh, last week, is that the series is going to be based on the Netflix original Dark, which was actually the very first German language original series on Netflix, which is a cool little fun fact there. But the point of inspiration that I'm going to be drawing from the show is the fact that the show takes place predominantly over three different years, 1953, 86, and modern day. So basically, I want to build this town, small German town, over the course of those three time periods. So instead of doing what's kind of typical with some YouTubers, which, you know, it's not a new or original idea to have, you know, a city be developed, over, you know, however many years that you wish to do it. Uh, there's several YouTubers and series out there that are pretty good. Uh, my favorite being Altengrad. Uh, that's definitely my favorite uh, kind of time period, how he's uh, gro how Akros is growing his Central European town just over the course of like the early, early 1920s and, you know, wherever he uh, wants to end up uh, taking that, however many years he wishes to go. Well, we'll see, but... Uh, yeah, so it's not super original, the idea, but what I'm trying to do differently with this is actually build three towns all on the same map. Of course, the towns are all going to be the same town. The difference is I'm going to divide the map into three thirds. So just a little graphic on the screen there. And in doing so, each little area will be completely equal in size. And each area, one will have the town in 1953, one will have it in 1986, and one will have it in the modern day. So what I'm planning on doing is starting this series in 1953, which is what we're doing here on screen as we're building this cemetery and church, which is uh, one of my own models I uh, made for this series, since this is a pretty iconic location in the show. But yeah, what I want to do is build the city in 1953. So probably for a couple episodes at least, building the town, some of the key locations from the television show. And then once we build the city up, as it is in 1953, I'm going to plan on using Move It to copy everything, uh, absolutely everything. So, you know, the trees, the river, of course, the buildings and the roads, absolutely everything, and then just rotating it appropriately and then plugging into the next section, that's one third, which is gonna be in the year 1986. And then we'll be able to have, you know, kind of already built city to modify and extend and add buildings and such that are noticeably from the 1980s. So I was kind of considering just doing one, you know, one city, kind of a normal thing, and then just, you know, adding modern buildings, at least in the 1980s, and then once we get to the modern day, adding more buildings and such. But I kind of wanted, like I said, to do something a little different, which is why I decided to go this way. And it'll also allow me to do some cool cinematics at the very end, because since everything's going to be completely identical, at least, you know, the road layouts, the building locations, with the exception of stuff that I changed, of course. But since everything's going to be the same, I can just do quick comparisons, and, you know, from the 50s, the 80s, and of course, modern day. And I think it's going to make for some, you know, cool cinematic shots and just something that I know I've never done or I don't think of anything too much quite like that, at least on YouTube. But I do think you guys are going to like uh, this little twist on the series 
Um, like I said, I'm quite excited to get this going and seeing the city change and grow over the three different years. But uh, anyways, I guess we can get into what we are doing on screen finally, and that is detailing this church and churchyard with the cemetery out front, which will come in a sec. But this asset here is actually my very first uh, custom asset that I made for the game, uh, or technically second, because I did make a small little freight car for Berlin Noir. But this was like the re or first like real asset that was, you know, not something super easy like that. And it took me quite a while. I worked on it on and off for several months. Uh, the first asset has some really weird uh, stretching thing in game where it got stretched out like way too much on one of the axi or axes. And uh, yeah, I had to actually redo it completely. So this is my second attempt. I was able to do my second attempt. I was able to do a little more quicker since, you know, I kind of had a feeling what I was doing. I did simplify the model a bit, but uh, yeah, it is a pretty bare bones model. So I'm not actually going to release it publicly on the workshop. Uh, you know, I want to keep the workshop having, you know, the absolute best top quality assets because they are absolutely incredible asset creators out there. And I want to, you know, don't want to clutter it up too much, even though I know it's just one asset, but you know, I want it to be the best. However, if you want to use this asset, all you have to do is go uh, to the link in the description uh, to the asset list on the workshop. And even though it's not public, the asset, you can still actually subscribe to it through there. So that's going to be the only way to actually get to it. So yeah, if you want it, got to get it that way. Because unless I somehow down or somewhere down the line improve it and such, uh, yeah, I'm not going to release it publicly. But uh, anyways, the reason this was the asset that I created first for this series was because it's a very iconic location, as I already kind of mentioned. And it's a beautiful church itself. It's modeled after the type of like a Scandinavian stave churches, uh, that kind of dark wooden paneling and such. It's a very beautiful asset. And in real life, it's actually east of Potsdam. So it is a real church. And not in Scandinavia, but Germany. Interesting little thing. But uh, yeah, I cut out most of the cemetery part, since that's pretty repetitive. As you can see, we are moving on. But... You know, basically what I have planned for that over the course of this series is just expanding the cemetery a bit, you know, maybe adding some more trees since uh, looking at Google Maps today, the trees are very dense around the cemetery and that'll be something easy enough. But uh, yeah, I felt like that was a fitting place to start the series considering, as I said, that's a very iconic location in the show, plus it's a custom asset, which speaking of custom assets, this is another one that I made especially for the show, uh, which is the second one. I only created two for this, but uh, this is the house of the main character, which is another reason why I wanted to create it. And it's just a, you know, a small little uh, home, you know, just it's kind of more of a rural feel. It's actually pretty far north of Berlin in real life. It is a real house. But it is quite small, so it was a fairly quick asset that I was able to create. I actually did it in less than a week, uh, which is much, that time is much improved compared to how long it took to build the church. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to add some more details to the house. So I started out with this ivy here, which I added uh, on the asset to start. There's that little kind of like... Uh, ladder, wooden ladder on the right side or the where the vines and ivy are climbing up the right side of the house there. So yeah, I wanted to add some vines there since that is how it is in the show as well. But I do go quite heavily on the detailing here and definitely not something that I'm going to be able to do for the entirety of the series. I mean, I yeah, I spent almost hour and a half just on this one little area here not just this one house but there was another house that i made uh on the opposite side of it as well just for some screenshots and such when i was working on the teaser video as well so i wanted to really detail this area but also because it is like i said the house of the main characters so i wanted to detail it nice uh one thing that was a little difficult is in the show there's the house itself on the outside isn't really shown with the exception of the very front which is almost always the exact same camera angle. 
So I actually had to do some research as to, you know, what the actual house looked like, uh, especially the side and such. I actually found some other people online who had made like fan art and such, uh, other 3D models of the house. So I was able to reference those since they, of course, were had the entire house modeled. So I was able to use that as really, you know, the uh, inspiration for the rest of the house. But uh, yeah, just adding some small props and such. Um, I believe, which is a little weird, is in the asset, in real life, there you see that little uh, wooden staircase going up there. I don't believe that's the actual entrance to the house. As much as it looks like it, and as much as I thought it was for quite a while, it's not actually the entrance. The entrance is, for at least on this asset, the very back, which I guess is technically the front. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that kind of threw me off when I was modeling the asset to begin with. Because I was like, how do I make this into a door? Why does it look so weird? But yeah, so basically that's just the patio. And those are, I guess, just windows. Which, again, is a little weird. I don't know. I mean, it kind of makes sense as though maybe those are just a simple door that's kind of access, you know, for access to the patio. But as far as the actual entrance to the house goes, that's on the back side. But uh, yeah, so... I've been I've been using that one decal which I placed or placed a little while ago, but that kind of dirty not dirty but uh, that grass decal which has like some little wood ch chunks or maybe some leaves in there too, which is I don't know who makes it. It's not one of the very common decals in the game. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else use it, and the only reason I have it is because uh, from a guest build all the way back with uh, like the seventh or eighth episode of Berlin Noir, uh, Ping Yao, when he did a guest build for the rail yard, he used that. And ever since, that's when I've been using that asset. And it's really great because it adds some nice detail that's otherwise, you know, the grass textures in the game are usually fairly monotonous, just the same textured. So it's nice to add some variance. And that's a really good way to do that. But so I do build the rest of that neighborhood off camera since that also took a very long time since I did go fairly detailed on the rest of the houses there as well, which I just decided to cut that out since, um, yeah, it's fairly repetitive, just detailing a small little, uh, you know, street with some small houses and such. So I decided to move on and I wasn't really quite sure what to build. So what I decided to do was since I had, you know, I have a quite a lot of space to fill in since that's one thing I didn't mention yet. But uh, since, yes, I am obviously, as I said, basing this on a show, you know, the show doesn't show <laughs> a lot of the actual town itself. It's just really a very few number of locations, really. So that really is going to give me a lot of freedom to build just basically whatever I want uh, for the vast majority of this little town. So I decided to build this little you know, Bauhaus area, since a lot of you have mentioned to build it in Berlin Noir, which I haven't got around to in that series because a lot of those settlements are kind of further outside of the city and I'm trying to, you know, work in the center and kind of build out, of course, I don't want to go too far away. But uh, yeah, so I decided, you know, change it up since I haven't used it. I've seen this asset around a lot I've wanted to use it so I decided I might as well use it here so uh you know this would have been built not in the 50s most likely since you know Bauhaus was a little earlier 20 20s 30s so nonetheless it'd still be pretty new the actual structure and you know the ground around it so when I went for the detailing later on I did keep it pretty simple some pretty small trees and such just because yeah I know uh, looking at, um, we uh, working in Berlin Noir, looking at stuff that was back then in the, I guess, t late 20s and the 30s, and also looking at Google Maps, or sorry, Google Earth, and you can actually use the historical map function, which you can actually look at basically any city you want in several different time periods. So in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. It's just whatever they have available for that specific, uh, specific location. But uh, looking at that type of stuff, you can see really up until the 60s, uh, a lot of things were really like the landscaping and such of uh, houses and public areas as well were very well maintained. Uh, I guess, you know, going into the 70s or 80s, for whatever reason, a lot of that stuff kind of began to grow more wild. 
uh, not that it's bad, you know, uh, tr you know, crazy vegetation, vines, grass, you know, it's a, it's, it's a nice look in the appropriate setting, of course. But uh, yeah, so I decided even though this isn't a brand new area, I wanted to still keep the vegetation and detailing very nice and modern looking. So yeah, this is the last part of the episode, at least the last thing that I build. And yeah, so there's still several things I want to build that, you know, are for this time period, the 1950s. So I am planning on at least one more episode for the 1950s part of this series before moving on to 1986. Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of space to fill in that's not based on anything in the show. And definitely give me recommendations on what you want to see built. Because, yeah, I'm really not familiar with this type of, you know, building whatsoever. You know, I can only take so much from, you know, what I've learned with Berlin Noir. Because, you know, Berlin is obviously a very different city than such, you know, what I'm going for here. Which is just a very, very small uh, German town. So... Yeah, definitely give me recommendations on what I should build or any assets maybe since I can always use more since I'm constantly looking still. Uh, I definitely need more just general housing, but also uh, some commercial stuff, especially moving into the 80s. Since for that, I do have some of the like East Germany assets, which while I'm not placing this city in East Germany, like once we get to the 1980s in the series, uh, you'll see that you know, at least the police cars, if you're familiar with that, they will be f like the ones from West Germany. So, but on the workshop, at least German stuff in the 1980s, it's almost all exclusively East German stuff. So I did subscribe to some of that, not a lot of it, because some of it does definitely scream like East Germany, but I still want that, you know, 1980s feel. And I can't, you know, there's plenty of stuff like that for, you know, the U.S., but of course that doesn't make sense in this series. So, yeah, if, if there's anything that you think would work well for that in, you know, in anything in this time period, the 1950s or something in the 1980s, uh, definitely let me know because even if, you know, it's a very common asset, let me know because I probably missed it somehow. But also, I'd definitely like some of your help uh, just building 1950s, you know, Germany. I mean, this is a pretty small town, so, you know, I'm sure it's different than, you know, other, say, larger cities in Germany at the time, but even, you know, I really have absolutely no idea what 1950s Germany was like, especially in such a small town as this. Uh, I mean, there's only so much I can get from, like, the, television, the show itself, and then from pictures, of course, just general 1950s Germany. But... Yeah, like I'm, it's, I just, yeah, like I said, I really have absolutely no idea. I mean, when I think of the 1950s, uh, in the U.S., like that's a very prevalent, you know, aesthetic, uh, just like the ret general retro theme on uh, the 50s and 60s. It's very prevalent in like movies and TV shows, uh, just a general love of you know, what we'd call the good old days. Uh, it's just something very common and liked by many people, even though they never lived through that time period. So, it, yeah, it's, it's, I'm definitely kind of biased towards that type of stuff in the U.S. So when I think of that, I'm trying not to build anything that I would see, you know, in the U.S. in the 1950s. So, but yeah, it's inevitable that some of this, just how I build, the, you know, the road layouts, the building, stuff like that. Some of it, you know, may not necessarily be realistic because I'm just so familiar with the time period in the U.S. So, yeah, so definitely help me with that. Any recommendations based on this build that you see now or in the next episode as well? Uh, I don't know if I mentioned yet, but I build, I did build some of the actual town part off camera, actually quite a lot of it, actually. And uh, I'll probably I'll include some of the town build in the next episode. But I kind of just wanted to get familiar with the feel and uh, available assets and such just in the first episode. So that's why I didn't include anything on camera. But uh, you will see some of it in the cinematics, or at least one shot, I believe. So yeah, definitely help me out with that. Because, again, I really don't have much of an idea as to 1950s Germany. But uh, anyways, we are getting to the end of the episode. Just finishing off with the simple detailing, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, just some small trees trying to make it look really simple and very clean. Uh, just going for that general feel and such. 
But yeah, I hope you guys are excited for this little mini series. I'm not going to say how many episodes I'm planning on this lasting since for the past two mini series that I've done, I've been horribly off. So <laughs> frankly, there's no point in me trying to estimate how long a series will last because it most likely will not be accurate whatsoever. But uh, of course, we will eventually get back to Berlin Noir. Of course, that's not dead by any means. So if you are bummed out, uh, we'll be back soon enough for sure. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoy this episode and are looking forward to seeing this town grow over the next, you know, however many years through the 80s and into modern day. Uh, definitely something I'm looking forward to uh, doing and building for you guys. So enjoy the Cinemax and Dark fans, I think, will especially like it. And I will see you all next week in another video.